Okay, so to sum this video up, it, I think it went pretty smoothly. I have only one thing to tell you about. And uh, I basically took a game port joystick with a game port like so, uh, connector and ripped everything apart. And uh, so the connection, uh, the board, and this is a pretty simple board uh, with uh, end gate and two multiplexers. Uh, that that did the most of the work of connecting everything. Uh, most of the resistors are for the inputs of the this uh, uh, logic gate, so there are no microcontrollers on the here. Uh, rip apart everything from the uh, from the old gamepad, and uh, well, and let, let, let me show you uh, the, the board inside because. Uh, like I said, I'm not taking this apart anymore. No way. Uh, it took me far too long. I broke the board and so on. So let me show you on this one. And I will disassemble this, disassemble this real quickly. Uh, what, what's going on on the inside? For now, let's move it aside. Uh, one more screw. This is your cheapest uh, USB gamepad, mm, pretending to be a PS1, PS2 DualShock controller. Uh, just remove the motors. Make sure that you um, have an idea how they work, um, how, how they are put back together. You can move this analog part and now you can remove the uh, the plastic part that lights the uh, the analog light. Okay, so let's put it into the pieces. And what what I basically did uh, on here, you you have a more simple design because the uh, the, uh, the the board I used was also for the PlayStation connector that I removed. Uh, because it caused uh, all kinds of glit glitches when using the USB. Uh, as you can see here, the, this, they ha all have simple uh, test pins, so they can be connected directly and this is pretty easy. But I wasn't able to get the whole board inside of the, uh, the, the case uh, of the joystick, so I had to cut it. And I, at first I thought, well, oh, that's pretty easy. I will simply cut the part for the uh, uh, the, the motors so that there won't be any vibration. And uh, because I wasn't planning on, on doing the vibration part, it didn't even work on the with the USB connector uh, on that board. So uh, screw it. And uh, so I simply connected here. But what I noticed, all uh, all pins light up lit up, uh, one, two, four, all buttons lit up. And what I actually did is that I broke uh, the connection between uh, the, let's say, uh, ground or, uh, a, well, I think ground and the rest of the board. So the connection was connected somewhere with the traces through here and it went through here uh, on, on, on that board. And uh, on this, this wouldn't cause all of them to lit up. Uh, it simply wouldn't work, right? And on the on the other one, uh, they did something a bit different. I'll show you that on the on the paper, they had a uh, kind of weird setup there. They had something like this, so it wasn't like uh, like so. Uh, so so the the, the uh, you didn't close only only close the circuit. It was something like that. So uh, there were two halves of the resistive path, and also a bit longer on this side. So this is all resistive path, right? So the button went and connected those two here. And the weird thing was the there was there was a let's say. A connection trace over here, connection trace over here, but also a connection trace over here. And what I think they did, because 
I broke the connection or also when cutting I broke the, 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 the board somewhere over here because I had direct connection to the uh, uh, to the to the test pin so uh, I thought to myself that I oh I will break this and just just make it a smaller board because uh, you can see here it's getting smaller on this side and I had to fit, uh, fit the border uh, so uh, th this was weird right you would expect this and this to be the exact the same thing but uh, what happened is this was the button connection let's call it this was a, a ground connection so GND and this was a let's say plus so between here and here uh, you actually had well if you if you bridge that and uh, let's see that and this you, you hang the uh, the whole controller chip because you basically shorted out the circuit and and the, the, the computer didn't recognize the controller anymore so th th that was the first thing I, I did <laughs> and it didn't work uh, what I noticed is this with the, the construction of this is actually I something like GND and so you have a like something like this a resistor and this is a button I mean I have no idea how many case and this is the plus so 5 volts for example and uh, what they basically did is made the uh, because this was the input for the chip made the input high so on the TTL values uh, 5 volts or whatever that, that made the, 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 the uh, however the voltage drop on this so it could be something like three and a half or something like that on the TTL uh, this equals one and zero uh, sorry this equals zero so it's disconnected and one is a TTL value let's say zero volt so it connected to the ground directly uh, it was shorted through this resistive path, this part, but uh, I guess they were counting that because uh, th this was pretty wide and the dissipation was enough uh, for, for the brief press of the buttons or even holding them for a longer time and so on, it, it, it didn't matter uh, for them. And the same thing occurred when I disconnected those boards and those things because uh, as you can see here only three, three connections so that's pretty easy on the other one there was four connections let's go to the next page there were four connections and this was let's say button 7 and 5 so button 7, button 5 uh, ground and plus so and this setup, there were two buttons. Uh, let's, sorry for, for my drawing skills. There were two buttons. Something like that. And this was obviously the, uh, uh, this, this was the, let's say, it's seven pin. This was the five pin. Uh, button then uh, the ground was for example oh, uh, well, let's say the, the ground was here and the other ground was here and this was connected to the 5 volts so in, in this setup uh, if you have something like this I think there are the, the, those connections are of better quality I mean uh, this will probably wear out, uh, but the the resistive puff I, I noticed that they were also used in the uh, uh, Sony original controllers. Uh, I I'm not sure about that exactly, but I also I think the the Sony uses also the resistive puff, so you get exact reading and therefore they are better quality. Uh, so 
something it's a, the setup was like so so if you have something like this on the board what you could do uh, you, you had to uh, because I completely removed this uh, those little boards and what you could do was do something like this uh, button 7, button 5 ground and plus what you could do using a pencil uh, just trace something like this If you trace some the, the, on the board directly with a pencil, so using only graphite, made a resistive path that didn't connect to the ground, but connected to the plus of the of, of the let's say connector, uh, and 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 ju just to just to make sure I, I had no idea if I'm putting this if I'm not switching this around. But to be honest, I think the DL values should be like that. So uh, let's say. Uh, the, the the graphite path directly on the board here uh, it, it because after disconnecting those boards I had uh, all the shoulder uh, buttons pressed on the computer so I made this graphite path and it connected them so even after I broke the original uh, this button that was free button on, on that controller and even I broke in in the half so like here, I simply uh, that there was a bit of uh, plus trace over here. I simply made a graphite resisted path, and it works perfectly. Uh, it doesn't enable the button because uh, <clears throat> if you have TTL values on the input of the chip, you shouldn't have any. Uh, there shouldn't be any doubts on the. What, what current status is of the button uh, so uh, you, you always know the value so it's either on the plus or, or on, on the low, lower end and uh, usually uh, the mm, oh, if I'm looking at this right now the ones would be zero so that might be a ground and that might be a plus either way uh, <laughs> I, I may have switched those around uh, there is for sure a resistive path needed for other kinds of controllers so that may help you with in the future and you can fix them using only a pencil well if you ever thought that uh, in the olden days they also uh, making the, the joysticks better somehow they, they were manufactured in the, with, with better materials better uh, connections and so on well, I, I have to say that apart from the board that it's pretty simple and it, it's really basic stuff that can be replaced there is no cup chip lock on, on the new ones apart from the electronics the inside of this is pretty shitty because Oh, as you can see here that this will cause you an issue this may also cause you some issues because uh, well it rotates it has a spring there but I don't really think that this is really good quality if you are you know jamming it in uh, so uh, that, that, that's not really too great uh, the, mm, the resistive puffs on the uh, on the potentiometer that was made here and these are custom designed and I don't think they will uh, last much too long with, because this, this joystick wasn't used too much uh, if I remember correctly and uh, well apart from the throttle, the throttle is basic stuff uh, normal potentiometer but if you are, you are going to press on it and, and so on uh, that, that's not really a good idea because uh, the plastic covers the uh, if you are, if you are pulling on it then then it will help uh, the potentiometer but if you are pushing on it then this will cause some issues uh, it may break the knob and okay so uh, these are simple uh, simple uh, micro switches also this one are and I don't think that, that they are very very good quality uh, but the worst part because well, the, 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 the board is pretty okay, but the worst part are the connections. There are just too many cables going around. As you can see here, 
uh, from from the stick. Yeah, the, this is a connection to the game board, but from the stick you have, I think, about uh, 12 or something like that cables going around here. They could and and they are just just loosely uh, inside here. They are just uh, put together with with nice uh, black strands of tape, but they are just loose when you are moving this around. Well, th this is not made to last. The, those connections will break eventually. So uh, if this gets any real use, I don't think so, but uh, it will break in time. And even though this is made, I, I think this this one was bought in 2008, uh, sorry, uh, 1998, something around there. And uh, I also checked in today's money how uh, what was what what was the cost of this joystick? It was sixty dollars, and for sixty dollars USD, uh, you are getting pretty shitty joystick. I mean, for sixty dollars, right? That's all. That, I mean, you, you you could get something pretty pretty good for that, and but at that time uh, it was really expensive. So this is not made to last. Uh, I don't think my handiwork is also to a quality, but either way, I hope this will get some uh, minor use in the future and uh, I'm lending this to a friend because he is uh, fascinated with flying simulators currently, so he will get some use of it. And um, well, that's basically it. Just don't think that all controllers are built to last, uh, not much than uh, the, the, the one I took apart. This one, this is three dollars, three USD. All of it, two analog sticks, two motors, uh, twelve buttons, and this is pretty amazing, right? For uh, including the uh, the those, uh, I mean plus the directional buttons, and this is pretty amazing for three dollars, as opposed to sixty, uh, and current money value. So, well, <laughs> it, I never had an experience with those controllers, the cheapest ones, to break somehow, you know, uh, the analog sticks to, to just fall apart or something like that. And I, I well, they hit the ground, they, they were, uh, from, from the table, they were pushed and so on, so they are made pretty well, apart from the cable that often simply snaps in the uh from from moving around and it, apart from that but uh i i didn't have an issue if you go with something like four or five dollars you will have almost exactly the same controller but with a much better uh, uh much better buttons the, the uh, they are working uh a bit more like uh, PlayStation buttons, so because I have uh, a comparison with the original controller, so I will go with something like this, and I I know that nostalgia may uh, may put in your mind that something like this will last, but no, not really. I don't think so. At least if you would be using this for some old games, for example Commodore 64, when the, the stick was a uh, Connect would had a the basically a micro switch on each side, and this it's a basically a digital uh, so, uh, stick. Then uh, this won't last long. I, I'm sure of it. This will will completely fail in in, in about I don't know uh, something like 50 hours of use something like that because the connections here inside are pretty uh, low quality and the board is on here is much much better and there are all kinds of mitigation of the force of pushing this down and just not lose the screw as you can see you are pushing down not on the board but on the on those pins over here so it, it will work much better for you okay so i guess that's all thanks for watching hell yeah if you're not, don't know what it is, you're missing a lot.